bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection and prepared for this day by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel, and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Last Wednesday, the tangible symbol of ashes reminded us of our mortal nature, our place in the cycle of life, and our dependence on God. The Lenten season of reflection and simplicity spans 40 days, not including Sundays, which always celebrates Jesus' resurrection. Lent recalls the 40 days Jesus spent fasting and praying in the desert at the beginning of his public ministry. Though this season is solemn and reflective, it is also a time of preparing our spirits for all that is to come, a spring cleaning for the soul. Members of Epiphany and St. Andrew's churches have received Lent packets that encourage you not just to give up things for Lent, but to take on one or two new spiritual practices. If you haven't received a packet and you'd like one, please contact us by phone, email, or through our website. Last year felt like the lentiest Lent ever when the pandemic forced us into self-denial on many fronts. Those restrictions continue. It's still not safe to gather in church, but both Epiphany and St. Andrews have outdoor installations that will allow you to draw close to God this Lent. Epiphany's outdoor story walk is called Make Room and invites us to create space for God in our lives and in our communities. Thanks to all the artists who have contributed to our outdoor Way of the Cross here at St. Andrews, Walking the Way of the Cross allows us to appreciate anew the suffering and sacrifice of Jesus in profound ways. Each of the 14 stations includes a piece of original art created by not so much professional artists, but by anyone. Our church members ranging in age from five to 80 odd. So each station has an original piece of art, a snippet of scripture, a brief reflection, and a prayer. And we add a 15th station for the resurrection, which is situated right next to the prayer flags for every victim of COVID in our state. Thanks to Aaron Jenkin, our missioner, and to all those who have contributed to making Lent a time of holiness. We have a song for Lent, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. It's the shortest, oldest, simplest of prayers, but one that contains so much. And so listen to Jack sing, and then lift your voice to sing after him.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and I sh it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I lift my soul to you, O God. In you I trust, in you alone. Save me from shame and from defeat, lest my opponents should glory. the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son. The beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
This morning, we begin our Lenten journey along the way of Jesus' life and ours. The muddy yet promise-filled waters of the Jordan are behind us. John with his sharp tongue voice calling folks to repent and be baptized. Jesus coming to be cradled under those waters in John's hands. A still small voice proclaiming, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. The adventure of the way begins. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. The Gospel of Mark is lean in detail, no description of the wilderness temptations such as we find in Matthew and Luke, nothing about turning stones into bread, or throwing oneself down from the pinnacle of the temple, or seizing power over the kingdoms of the world. Only the briefest suggestion that it is in the, the Spirit of God who drives Jesus into the wilderness, and of the 40 days he's there. Only a hint of the content of his experience, tempted by Satan with wild beast ministered to by angels. With Mark's sparse description, we're invited to sketch in the background and paint in the colors from our own experience. First, what can we say about wilderness? As Americans living in this present time, we have romanticized the wilderness. You and I and L.L. Bean in a vacation get getaway challenge with a world of nature. But there are deeper meanings to wilderness. The wilderness is wild, threatening, disturbing, beyond our control. It is raw, fierce power without the caged bars of a zoo between the power and us. It is a howling wind and an unprotected storm. It is the sun-blinded -blind, dryness of being lost, alone, in an endless desert. Most of us have spent precious little, if any, time in the wild. We live in a domesticated, plastic-wrapped, thermostat-controlled environment where wildness is at most an exotic fling with MasterCard and not a potential source of terror. But the spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness, the real wilderness, with its temptations from Satan and wild beasts. The way for Jesus began in his encounter with wildness. Wildness on the outside, the sandy desert, rocky plateaus, and dry, desolate mountain terrain of Palestine, and the wildness on the inside. Yes, there is wildness inside our souls, for Jesus, for you, for me. There is a cauldron of feelings and emotions deep down within us that boils its vapors into our rational consciousness, powering the steam engine of our behavior. What was the external wilderness for Jesus but a place where he could begin to grapple with his internal wildness. Did I say begin? Perhaps better to have say had to begin, for there was nothing in the wildness around him to protect him from the pressure of grappling with the mirrored wildness within him. Is this too dramatic? Is this wilderness encounter in the Gospel of Mark an ancient and obsolete experience that Jesus alone had to face, but one that we do not in our time? I don't think so. Just because few of us will probably spend mo few of us will probably spend most of our time outdoors, wilderness does not mean we have no wilderness in our souls. One all too common inner wilderness for each of us points to the profound psychological truth 
that it can be very hard at times to share some of our innermost feelings with others. Not only the happy and loving feelings, but especially the ones where we feel alone, fearful or confused, depressed, brokenhearted, overwhelmed. When we feel lost, worried, ashamed, angry or guilty, misunderstood, inadequate in some way, or are fuming with frustration, it feels almost impossible to adequately share what we're really feeling. These feelings are hard to share with others because they're all of a jumble, and it can be very difficult to describe what we really would like to express. But no, even deeper than that, as we struggle to art articulate our stronger, strongest emotions, we also suspect that there is a fearful wildness to those feelings, and that wildness makes us anxious. The boiling cauldron of emotion may be buried deep inside our souls, but still the steam that rises from that cauldron, the steam that powers the engine of our behavior, the steam brings with it the troubling hint of wildness at our core. Beneath our polished exteriors, our studied competence, our practiced graciousness, there lies, we fear with reason, a frightening wilderness. How much easier life would be if we could banish that wilderness from both the conscious and the unconscious? How much easier life would be, perhaps, but also how much diminished? For if the wilderness contains Satan and its wild beasts, it also contains ministering angels. If the wilderness is the home of life-threatening struggles, it is also the home of life and power and healing. The Gospel of Mark doesn't say it in so many words, but it's true nonetheless. Satan and the wild beasts on the one hand and the angels on the other are in some mysterious and distant way cousins of each other. It was only by encountering temptation at the beginning of his ministry in the wilderness that Jesus was able to face that temptation renewed at the end on the cross, to face it without being destroyed by it. And that ability to face into the wilderness of his death can be seen as the gift of the wilderness angels. Jesus doesn't ask us that we dwell forever in the wilderness, but he does remind us that the way of his life began there. And in that reminder, he beckons us to be about our way into the same wilderness inside us. What then can we say about that first leg of the way? Quite simply, we can affirm that Jesus has gone before us into that wilderness. He knows the wildness within the human spirit, and he has hammered out a trust in the midst of that wildness that God is Lord of all that life can bring. No wilderness is beyond the scope of God's love and power. And what is that wilderness trust? For me, it is beautifully expressed in one of our most beloved hymns, which begins, Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices, who wondrous things hath done, in whom his world rejoices, who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Yes, you and I pass our days in our domesticated thermostat control modern life where wildness might be at most an exotic fling with a MasterCard. That is where we pass the better part of our days, but not all of them. 
Life can throw its unbidden crosses our way. When that happens, and it has, and it will to each of us, we'll find ourselves in the middle of a deeper wilderness. There are the moments along the way when it is good to know that Jesus has been there before us, when it is good to have begun to hammer out our own trust that Jesus has been there before us. Satan and the wild beasts will be with us, yes, but so too there will be angels. Amen. Spirit, you mark us out in love, you light upon us in gentleness and grace. Lord, Holy Spirit, you mark us out in love, you light upon us in gentleness and grace. Now drive us out into the wild places, drive us out beyond our knowledge and control. Lord, Holy Spirit, you mark us out in love, you light upon us in gentleness and grace. Lord, Holy Spirit, you mark us out in love, you light upon us in gentleness and grace. Now drive us out into the wild places. Drive us out beyond our knowledge and control. Though we're tempted by the evil one, we'll be friended by the wild ones. Though we're tempted by the evil one will be friended by the wild ones. Lord, Holy Spirit, you mark us out in love, you light upon us in gentleness and grace. Lord, Holy Spirit, you mark us out in love, you light upon us in gentleness and grace. Now drive us out into the wild places. Drive us out beyond our knowledge and control. Though we're tempted by the evil one, we'll be friended by the wild Though we're tempted by the evil one, we'll be friended by the wild ones. And fed by the hands of the angels, as we wait in this barren place. Yes, we're fed by the hands of the angels waited upon by grace. Lord, Holy Spirit, you mark us out in love, you light upon us in gentleness and grace. Lord, Holy Spirit, you mark us out in love, you light upon us in gentleness and grace. Now drive us out into the wild places, drive us out beyond our knowledge and control. Though we're tempted by the evil one, we're befriended by the wild ones. Though we're tempted by the evil one, we're befriended by And led by the 
by the hands of the angels as we wait in this barren place. Yes, we're fed by the hands of the angels and waited upon by grace. So draw us back to the world you love and draw that world to your heart. So draw us back to the world you love and draw that world Loving God, as we journey through these weeks of Lent, open our hearts, minds, and wills to the light of your loving kindness. Gracious God, your Son was tempted as we are. Be our strength in times of weakness. When we fall, lift us up. When we are in error, direct us. In all our wanderings, be our guide, that we may be your faithful people. In our worldwide Anglican communion, bless the province of Central Africa. Here in New Hampshire, bless Bishop Rob. And Holy Cross Church in Ware, where he is visiting this morning. Bless each of us and help us make space for you this Lent. In your loving kindness, O God, have have mercy mercy and and hear our prayer. prayer. You established your covenant with Noah and gave us the rainbow as a sign of your protective care. Bless the created world, sustained by your mercy, but threatened by human greed and indifference. Enlighten those in power and authority. In our polarized world, make us conscious of the unity of all humankind and the sanctity of all creation. Make leaders trustworthy and compassionate in their decisions and guide the nations into the ways of justice and peace. In your loving kindness, O God, have have mercy mercy and and hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Have mercy on victims of floods and other natural disasters. Give hope to those in the wilderness of grief and despair. Hold in your tender care all who are in the grip of pain or fear. Heal those who are afflicted with COVID-19. Comfort those on our parish prayer lists and our loved ones who are suffering. We name them before you now in silence or aloud. In your loving kindness, O God, have Have mercy mercy and and hear hear our prayer. In baptism, we are united with Christ's death and resurrection. In this hope, we give thanks for those who have died and now find peace in your eternal presence. We remember all those who have died from COVID in our state. Grant us with them a share in your heavenly kingdom. In your loving kindness, O God, have have mercy mercy and and hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now with your care and anxious fear and worry for schemes are vain and fretting brings no gain Lend calls to prayer, to trust and dedication. God brings to beauty by reply, reply, reply with love to love most high. Reply, reply, reply with love to love most high. To bow your head in sackcloth and in for endless soul. Such grief is not lent's goal, but to be led. To bear God's glory flashes his beauty to come near. Make clear, make clear, make clear where truth and light appear. Make clear, make clear, make clear where truth and light Together, let us pray. God of the covenant, as the 40 days of deluge cleanse the world, so in the saving flood of baptism, your people are washed clean and born again. Throughout these 40 days, we beg you, unseal for us the wellspring of your grace. Cleanse our hearts of all this is not holy and cause your gift of new life to flourish once again. Grant this through Christ, our liberator from sin, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, holy and mighty God, forever and ever. Amen. God give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And just before I say the words of dismissal, a reminder and an invitation for folks to come to Epiphany and experience that wonderful story walk, and also to come to St. Andrews, where you may experience the way of the cross with original art from our church and community members. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.